So my name is Reese. Um, my day job is at New Relic, where I'm a senior developer uh, relations engineer. And I also work on the end user SIG um, that Austin just mentioned. So if there's any events or any end user resources you're interested in starting up, definitely come see me or uh, Rin is here as well. I think that's just the two of us. But anyways, I'm going to pass the mic down the line here so everyone has a chance to introduce themselves. But we're here to get to know the governance committee, find out what they do, and you all will also have a chance to ask questions. I'll stand so I can be seen. Uh, I'm Dan Dyla. Uh, my day job is at Dynatrace. I've been contributing to Open Telemetry since uh, late 2019. Uh, been a while. I've been the maintainer of the JS SIG since then, and I've been on the governance committee since uh, late 2020. I totally forgot to introduce myself earlier, sorry. I'm Austin Parker. Um, I am director of open source at honeycomb.io. I've been on the governance committee um, since last year, and I've been involved in open telemetry since, um, yeah, late 2019, and then I was a maintainer of open tracing before that. I'm Judas Sip, I'm Sean Crowling. I'm a software engineer at Grafana Labs. Um, I work with the open telemetry, or own the open telemetry project as my day job. Uh, and I've been with Open Telemetry since it was Open Tracing, right? So um, it's been a while. Um, I work out. I work on the collector as well. So I feel like I know the collector folks in this room here. I know the other. Uh, I don't know fifty percent of this room here from Open Telemetry, but I'm here this week to get to know the other half of the room. Hey everybody, I'm Ted. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of the project from the Open Tracing side of the family. And uh, yeah, I serve on the GC and mostly run around putting up fires and uh, trying to make people happy. Hi, everyone. Very nice to be here. I'm Alalita Sharma. And uh, I've been on the project working, uh, contributing to Metrics, uh, Metrics GA, uh, Prometheus Interop uh, for since 2000. So, you know, super thrilled to see the project grow and really take off and be this de facto standard. Uh, I lead AIML observability at Apple. So uh, again, a lot of exciting things going on in the, in the world of AIML nowadays. Uh, and super thrilled to you know, see the intersection of our wonderful community here at Otel Community Day today. So, Reese, over to you. Sorry, I didn't mean to just awkwardly pass in front. Um, so, I guess we'll get started. So what does the governance committee do? Well, um, I think uh, it's a very good question. And we've asked ourselves that too, you know, <laughs> several times, because I think it's a good way to actually check in on what, you know, the governance committee is up to, given we are, you know, elected by the community. Uh, every two years, the GC has a two-year term, and you know it rolls over across the GC. So um, I would say a couple of areas that we definitely, you know, have taken on and have been working through is first of all wearing a product hat, you know, managing the product backlog uh, and the feature backlog, if you will, for the project, and looking at you know some of the new uh, issues that are coming up in the spec. And you know Ted and everybody else on the GC actually has been phenomenal in uh, contributing to making sure that you know we all actually look at the backlog on a regular basis. So we do look at it on a weekly basis. And the second uh, area, of course, is that making sure that uh, you know any kind of uh, contributor and developer experience uh, concerns that the project community might be seeing, or any governance you know concerns that they might be seeing are brought up and uh, supporting our maintainers, of course. Ted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> besides dealing with nonsense behind the scenes, um, that better goes left unsaid, uh, there's uh, been this need as the project has grown to have more and more structure. Um, we're always adding structure. Every time we add a piece of structure, I always ask, how did we get this far? without having this much structure. Um, and this year is no different, though I think we've really turned it up quite a bit by specifically adding 
a, a concept, a much more concrete concept of, of project management. So we haven't fully rolled this out to the community because we're kind of beta testing it and we want to get, get comfortable uh, with it. But basically, we have this concept of projects uh, that are themselves something that's evolved. Uh, projects need to have sponsors. This is something that we've learned is that uh, as the project's grown, we have a lot more people coming in from the outside when we're working on a new area. It's almost always a collaboration between subject matter experts who understand that area because we're just you know, a bunch of trace jockeys, so we don't necessarily know anything about profiling or client telemetry or anything like that. So subject matter experts come in, but they don't know much about open telemetry. And if we want to make sure those groups can quickly-ish uh, come together on a design proposal that is going to be accepted by the community, uh, we have to like sponsor those groups and there needs to be like some clear active collaboration and people in those groups need to understand who they can go talk to uh, in open telemetry about like getting their stuff moving. Um, and the next step of that is like the GC, besides putting those groups together, needs to actually like keep tabs on them. Uh, and also like all of the rest of the maintainers in the project, um, trying to make sure everyone's a little more connected we just started a new GC liaison program. Just making sure there's a line of communication between the, the SIGs and the GC so that there's just some information flow going back and forth. Um, we do have a maintainers meeting, but um, just like rather than waiting for maintainers to like bubble things up, just like outreaching to the maintainers and just checking in with them. And uh, also uh, the next step of that, we'd like to start reaching out to new contributors a little more directly. We feel like that's a role the GC should play uh, when we see new people joining and making uh, significant contributions, just letting them know that they've been seen and you know, uh, seeing what we can do to help them contribute more. I guess there's nothing else to say about that. I mean, um, I guess what, uh, I would summarize all of that with the idea that the GC is the ultimate responsible for the health of the project. And if it means going monthly to the maintainers and asking them how they're doing, or if it means building handbooks for new contributors, then that's what we, we have to be, um, perhaps not doing ourselves, but um, fostering a, a smaller community on executing on, the, on those ideas, on those needs. Um, and I think that's what the GC does. So the GC um, is also part of most of it, uh, or every one of us, uh, we wear different hats uh, in the project, so we, we are at the GC only well, for one hour of the week, I think. <laughs> uh, but then acting as um, members of the project in, in on the remaining of the week. Uh, two hours, because there's triage, too. Yeah. yeah. Well. Um, I'll actually add something <clears throat> to, to your point about wearing multiple hats. One other thing that the GC acts as is, in a lot of ways, like a strategic representative of the project to the greater cloud native community so there's a lot of like little things that are very boring about that but for example um, the open telemetry now has access to some like very large amount of like oracle cloud credits um, that sigs can use there's also amazon credits that we have access to and there, there's a lot of like resources that we can get from the CNCF from member companies who make donations of resources into the CNCF. And so part of our job is like going out and and handling that, the the like talking to people and making stuff available and da 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 right? We also wind up getting roped in, <clears throat> I say roped in. Um, we also wind up kind of being an interface to the media, so when we go to KubeCon and you know we want to talk about like here's all the cool things happening in Otel. Um, we collaborate with the CNCF's PR department to, you know, build news releases and do interviews with analysts and journalists about what's going on um, to help promote the project, obviously, but also to help promote like open source observability and, and cloud native more generally, right? Um, and that also leads to kind of we'll talk to people at a strategic level in sort of like large member organizations, right? Like larger banks or, you know, 
people that are trying to like develop an open telemetry strategy, um, we we become advocates for the project and advocates for like what we're doing. So a lot of that stuff is like really not visible to um, anyone. You see the outputs, you see things like this, or you see like the the open telemetry observatory at KubeCon, but you know. It, it's another one of those function, you know, kind of those invisible functions of the GC. Do you have anything else to add, or is there more to add? I don't think so. I think that basically covered it. We do these things. We do the, the maintainer track talks. Yeah, we do these panels and maintainer track talks. <laughs> um, yeah. So for a long time, the past few years, the focus has been traces, metrics, logs. Are y'all done? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 shipped. Project's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, this is actually you know back to the like project management. This is one of the reasons why I think we've had to like step it up more recently. Was like we didn't really need much of a roadmap for the first several years. It's like, what are we working on this year, Pinky? It's like the same thing we were working on last year, traces, metrics, and logs. Um, but as we've like gotten near the end of that, there's been a whole bunch of interest in expanding the project in a bunch of different ways. And at the same time, there are parts of traces, metrics, and logs that we kind of put aside uh, we kind of have an 80-20 rule we found in open telemetry. When it, it comes to design, there's often like 80% that like everyone can totally agree on. And then there's like some bit where it's like, this is weird and we're not totally sure exactly how to do this and we can't find consensus on it quite yet. And we tend to be like, well, let's put that aside so we can get the 80% through. But at this point, there's now kind of a backlog of of some of those things. So I don't think we're actually done with traces, metrics, and logs. Uh, but we do need to find a balance between that and also doing like profiling and client and machine learning and you know all these other things. So figuring out like how much bandwidth we actually have is something we're thinking about. I, I mean is anything ever done in open source? Yes. Okay, well we seem to have a split decision. I think the the key thing really is that I don't think open telemetry is going to be done until the until everyone agrees with us. Um, but it, really, when you think about it, right? Like Op Otel is one of the Otel is it's interesting because when you look at it, how you perceive it depends on where you're kind of looking at it. Um, if you look at it from the perspective of like, well, I've been using X thing for like metrics and log aggregation. Uh, you know, the collector is just another file beat or whatever, right? Um, it's another way to scrape Prometheus endpoints. And it's a way to perpetuate, you know, it's an open source way to do it. It's a non-proprietary way to do it. Cool. But it's another way to kind of perpetuate the sort of observability signals that you've already had. And then if you look at it from the other perspective, it's like, oh, there's actually a lot you can do here because of these fundamental changes that are baked into the data model and baked into the tooling and ecosystem. And I, I don't think we're going to be done until most people are looking at it from that second perspective, um, quite frankly. Yeah, I see a few ways we can evolve in the future. One of them is um, the standards, like semantic conventions. We have so many semantic conventions to make stable and to convince people that uh, specific names are, um, I don't know, worth pursuing more than other formats, I don't know. Uh, and then the collector itself, we, we are trying to get a V1, uh, towards the end of the year or I don't know, sometime this year. But uh, at the same time, we have profiling coming. So where do we fit profiling the collector? And what are the next steps for the collector? So we have so many things around like building collectors with the builder and building interfaces to build collectors. And so it's we're never done, I think, to, to your point. Uh, and then we have new signals as well. So we have we, we can grow in so many directions. And, uh, and for those of you who are not contributors to the project, we need you. We need you to expand into those areas that we know that we need, but we don't have the, the capacity right now. I would also say that obviously we do have new signals coming, but even if we didn't, say we, we froze the project today and said we're not expanding scope, we still have many, many years of improving the experience, more instrumentation, native instrumentation, 
like it's it's a project that will never be done kind of by definition. It can always be better. Um, and I think we were all having some conversations earlier today. And I would like to re reiterate to Daniel's point, we won't be done because, you know, we have a lot of work to do in improving developer experience and end user uh, experience for adoption. Uh, but it's also that we are also seeing a new generation of observability requirements that are coming in with AI applications. And there is foundational work to be done at every layer. Uh, in order to make that intersect with the, not only with OTLP, which is our protocol, data protocol, but also with uh, inherent support and standardized metrics, uh, tracing, profiling coming in uh, for um, a new class of uh, hardware, which is uh, GPUs and you know additional compute that is coming in. So it's very, very important that, you know, again, if you say Kubernetes uh, metrics, you know, observability, is it done? Not really. Uh, is it, uh, is tracing done? Not really. Because, you know, you have also this lower layer that is completely changing the way that we are going to have, you know, the, uh, the networks and the, and the uh, applications that are supported across that. So with a new generation come new requirements, and I think that's the cool thing about working in open source, that a project like Open Telemetry can actually absorb and you know, start an, uh, a whole generation of new SIGs, which actually can work on these areas as you know, developers in that space need to be able to support that. So I really welcome you know, and would love to have more c contributors joining in to support support that new generation. You know, work towards the spec, work towards the um, uh, protocol, work towards you know the implementations in the different languages and the standardization of metrics and traces and profiles which are coming in to support that new generation of applications. Yeah. Just a quick shout out to the new convenient SIG that's starting up. Um, Experience. De developer experience that we're calling it now? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, anyways, the idea is there's at least one of the ideas there is there's a lot of places where we could add sugar, like our APIs, installers, configurators, and everything are designed for completeness and meeting requirements so that they can work everywhere and handle everything. That, of course, means for doing like the basic normal things, they can be like a bit overly complicated. So where in the, I see so many heads nodding right now, uh, where in the project can we add sugar on top of these things uh, to make those parts uh, just faster and more convenient. I think this is a great place for end users to get involved because you're all the people who really know uh, where the pain points are. Uh oh, um, this is not a bit. Otel will not be done until someone other than OpenTelemetry has implemented the spec. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, when we have our first like hard, hard implementation fork, that's when we're done. That's because we're all gonna go home. But seriously, no, I, I do think like alternative, there's, there's so much there, right? Like it's very easy to see hotels this big monolith, but it's it's very composable, and um, I'm real, the the future holds a lot for it. Do we want to do audience Q and A? I I'm sure you all have many interesting questions. Feel free to raise your hand, and I will come find you. Ah, brave soul. <laughs> so how do you decide like uh, whether it's appropriate to open up a new SIG or a new signal um, when people suggest it to the project? Because like there's a lot of, everyone like, has a lot of ideas and whatnot, but resources are limited and every new like SIG that we add on it's uh, more over, I'm just curious. Um, okay, so that's a good question. It's a great question. Great question. Um, I guess I'll use this. Uh, so this is a thing we've had to work on because we want SIGs to succeed. And so what we've developed is uh, a project 
process and um, a project template. So when someone wants to propose a new SIG, uh, there's a whole bunch of pieces uh, that need to be laid out. So you create an issue in the community repo, um, actually a PR in the community repo, um, with all of this information, and we try to work with that group to fill it out. So it's like, what is the goal? Um, who's actually going to work on this project? Who's going to be the lead? Who's going to sponsor it? Who is committing to actually write code and build the prototypes? What is the rough timeline that we think uh, will, will be done? And if we can get all of that together, and it seems like we aren't spreading ourselves too thin, then we'll start the SIG. But we're trying to be very cautious about, this sounds like a fun idea, let's just spin a group up. Um, and when people don't have all of those things, just like one note, there's often this temptation to be like, well, we'll it'll just be experimental. We'll just start this thing in the corner and we'll just experiment. We, we have a hard no to that because that results in people doing a whole bunch of work and then coming back with their experiment. And we're like, no, we're not accepting this experiment because you know it was not enough people involved. So that's that's how you actually do it, and that's how we we make the decisions. Um, I think I can maybe speak for the GC and say it's actually like there's I think there's a perception that we have we have accepted too much work, um, and I think that's partially true. But I also think that it's a there's a little bit of recency bias because a lot of the stuff that, <clears throat> just to be like pretty blunt, like people will I've I've heard from people that are like very heavy tracing, like primarily using Otel for tracing, and they're like, why are you doing profiling? Why are you doing events? This doesn't make sense to me. Profiling and events have are literally like two year old plus projects, right? We've been working on those for quite a while, and in a lot of cases, those came effectively pre-staffed, right? Like. The people that are working on profiling as a signal are people that work on profiling. It is a kind of a distinct um, subspecialty. The people that are working on events are web performance engineers that, you know, are very deeply committed to it. And I think they've brought like this amazing level of like depth and care. And it's required us, you know, and this is not an easy process to kind of ex to comport those together, right? Now, the end result is, I think, a good one, where we've kind of are going to have achieved, for the most part, uh, we will have a compromise that makes everyone equally unhappy. But <clears throat> you don't get there by like without taking that time and putting in that effort. I do think, in general, we're probably going to be like the the bar for like a net new thing to come in is going to get higher, but. I also feel like as the spec matures and becomes more stable, you know, you don't have to be a SIG to build on Otel, right? Like as the spec stabilizes and the API, I, ugh, the API stabilizes and all this stuff becomes more stable, I actually expect to see like the ecosystem around Otel getting larger. And there's already some examples of this. There's a project um, that I think is a sandbox project now called Open Elelemetry, which is a which is basically like Ot which is built on Otel APIs and SDKs, and it's for like, hey, this is how you observe these various AI components, right? So, you know, people should feel free to do that. If you ha look at the Kubernetes ecosystem, there's a boatload of projects in the CNCF that are like Kubernetes plus something or some Kubernetes component, right? They don't all live under the Kubernetes project. You know, this is this is how these things mature and improve. So people should feel free to, if they have like a really great hotel idea, to like go build that really great idea. Um, and if it is sustainable, then it can become you know a separate project as part of the you know the foundation. Perhaps just a, a small clarification before um, you asked well, when we define when we decide for a new SIG. And we here would be like Open Telemetry as a project or the GC. The GC doesn't decide when a new SIG is formed, right? So we can uh, sometimes, yeah, but I mean, we merge the PR. We, yeah, but we, um, it doesn't, we wear different hats. Um, it doesn't have to come from us. And we don't do the, 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 the sourcing for that project. Right? So we, we expect the, the, the people uh, proposing the SIG to go and find all of the information they need. And then we just 
say, okay, that's that's okay, or that's uh, we are not going to accept it. Um, but it's mostly formal, right? I mean, if if the a proposal has enough uh, like people and interest, then we're not going to say no, um, likely. Uh, but yeah, I think there was a question. Or is there a question? Yeah. Okay. Hi, how's it going? Uh, my name is Mike. So I caught something there that was kind of fascinating to me. Um, you're talking about how, while fundamentally all of these signals are probably like a timestamp and a number or a timestamp and a string, you are, uh, as it evolves, you're finding that there are specific objects you want to be able to capture because those are the objects we work with. So like an event, for example, you mentioned, or a metric. I think, again, fundamentally, timestamp in a string, timestamp in a number, but you're recognizing those as specific objects that should be captured uh, separately. Uh, you also mentioned LLMetry. <laughs> That's an interesting word. Um, and I believe one of you mentioned that you are uh, responsible for observability in AI at Apple. Um, so this is all kind of leading me to be very curious. What are some of these? newer signals that we're discovering that should be captured as their own first class object in our telemetry in the AI world? So I, I think, you know, um, uh, it's a good question. And I think we are still in that uh, process of discovery, if you will. But uh, the foundational approach uh, for even new types of objects or new types of uh, data that are related to these objects. You know, models is a good example. Um, models have existed in ML for a long time. Um, they are becoming more and more sophisticated, larger, and also, you know, a lot faster. But uh, I think that foundationally, what we, the approach we have taken in observability, especially, is to align with the existing signals and the existing data types as much as possible. Because it's always easy to go and spin off and say, hey, you know, this is another type of data, uh, and let's go and support this new data stream, right? And then, but um, it's also very hard to roll out instrumentation across the industry and the different layers um, of support, whether that's, uh, you know, hardware instrumentation or OS instrumentation can, you know, or your orchestration layer or your application layer where you have to have full support for that whole stack, right? So we are very considerate in looking at how that, uh, you know, what uh, these new data types are can be aligned with existing um, data signals in observability. And if you know uh, there is a need to define additional areas, uh, we are doing some work in semantic conventions, as uh, Austin was mentioning earlier. We do have an LLM uh, semantic convention SIG in on the project, and again, also the community he was referring to from LLM Metri and others have also been working in that SIG. So we do try to kind of invite everybody to work together and collaborate so that we still maintain a baseline on the protocol standardization. Uh, that said, things will evolve. We may have new data types, you know, as um, the uh, generation of AI implementations gets more complex, and uh, you'll see that evolution occur. Uh, the oh, no, sorry, no, you can. Uh, so the, the question was about adding new signals, and what I wanted to say is if we've done a good job designing the existing signals, they should cover many use cases into the future. The idea is not that we're going to add a new signal every time that technology changes, because that would be uh, a never-ending uh, misery, probably. Um, but I mean, the, the, the way that I think about the signals is that Kind of at its at its base layer, everything is either an event or some compression layer on top of events. So when you have metrics, uh, you're aggregating events together. You're counting events. You're you're doing something along those lines. Traces is fundamentally a start event and an end event that are correlated together. 
Um, so the time to add a new signal is when you see something that is so widely adopted uh, that it makes sense to, to promote it up to a higher level uh, to enable like more strict guarantees about the structure of the data when it comes into your backend for analysis. Uh, or if it's in the case of like metrics, you just can't send every event. So you have to aggregate it as almost for compression reasons uh, over the wire. So in terms of new signals, that's the way that I tend to think about it. Um, and then uh, what you're talking about, I think, is more new use cases on top of the existing signals. Uh, and a lot of that will happen in uh, the semantic conventions, for example. So you have uh, like a definition for this event should have these attributes and this name. Uh, and as new use cases come in, that can evolve much more quickly without having to define new top level signals yeah um, I think like we talk a lot about semantic conventions but it's also probably worth considering that like hotel telemetry itself is semantic telemetry right a trace is the, you know a semantic convention a semantically durable way to express like what is in a what is a, these series of events that happen between a start time and an end time, and da 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 da, a metric is, you know, a semi like that's why the hotel, you know, hotel metric spec is like super in depth, right? Why is that? Because you need all these semantics um, for storage reasons, for query reasons, and also for like end user reasons, right? Like there's no reason if you know that a you know particular instrument is of type X, then why let people do the wrong kind of math on it? Um, now, a lot of the tooling hasn't caught up to where all these semantics are. And I think that is, you know, to my earlier point about like people that are in kind of class A versus class B of how they look at Otel, like we're not going to get to that class B part until there is this, the tooling kind of catches up to where these underlying um, standards are going. So perhaps um, specifically to the um, AI or, or um, that kind of new signal. I would say that it's too early for us to know whether that warrants a new signal. Uh, we we had proposals from Alolita actually for, uh, for RUM signal uh, in the past when we discussed, you know, do we need a RUM signal or do we not need it? Um, people still don't know whether we need that. Um, so we it might we might have we might have a new signal in the future. Um, the same for profiling. So profiling, even though we can see we can debate whether it is a an event or not. Um, when we look at the details for the OTAP, for the OTLP profiling um, specification, we can see that a lot of it is um, optimization to make profiling usable as a signal. You know, so it's so much data that is, that is generated for one specific sample that we have to do a lot of optimizations. Um, and I guess my point is because we don't know which optimizations we need in the future for this new, um, new whole new area, we don't know whether we need or not a new signal in the future, even though it might look like what we that we have the basics covered already today. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I just wanted to say, like, the most important signal we need to integrate is the bat signal. Like, <laughs> if every time a system goes down, if, like, that thing could go off, so... Hi, um, I'm interested in the sort of language question. Um, you know, when you think about the balance between um, supporting different languages and trying to standardize versus idiom in a language, uh, kind of where do you think the lines should be drawn? How do you how do you congeal a spec that's as broad as this across so many different uh, language environments, in particular? Yeah, so I, I, th I think that's dangerously close to a TC question, but as a language maintainer and a GC member, I, I guess I'll try. Um, the spec is written very generally and leaves a lot, of, a lot to the interpretation of the language maintainers. Um, we, we really do want everything to feel the same if you're switching between languages, as a lot of engineers do. Uh, you shouldn't have to completely relearn how to use OTEL. 
Uh, but at the same time, if you've been using some language like Java your entire life, you shouldn't install Otel and then just be like, what is this API? It looks so weird. So it's, it's kind of a balance between the two. Uh, and from a specification level, uh, it's generally left quite open to interpretation by maintainers in order for them to make decisions about their own uh, language implementations. Um, that said, we do have some very specific requirements in the spec uh, around certain things that either come up in multiple languages and, and multiple maintainers have asked the same question. That'll be added to the spec as a clarification. A lot of those are like should requirements, not, not must requirements. Um, but yeah, in, in general, we, we like, to, uh, like to think that we can trust our maintainers to, to make those decisions in a way that makes sense. Uh, and occasionally, you know, people make mistakes, it happens, and things bubble up. Uh, but that's why we have uh, kind of a long uh, experimental uh, type of uh, cycle, longer than I think most people would hope sometimes. But uh, it is, you know, for good reason, and it does help a lot in that regard. I, the the developer experience SIG is designed to kind of tackle this question, I think. Just speaking spiritually, I do feel like we've probably erred on the side of not being explicit enough that languages should be more, err on the side of like idiom, um, existing language idioms maybe. You know, maybe we should have been more explicit about that from the jump. It, that has always been the intention of the project, right? Because one of the big things we learned from open tracing was that uh, spec adherence to the API spec um, made the spec really made the APIs really painful in language. In it made it suck equally for everyone, which wasn't a great outcome, I don't think. Um, and we really wanted to avoid that in open telemetry. Just, just to add one quick thing, as a, a language maintainer, I receive complaints, opposite complaints for this question all the time. So I get issues that are open that are like, this feels like Java, why would you implement this way? Like you're a JS developer. I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, and then I get the exact opposite uh, complaint that's like, you made this way too JS specific and I'm coming from Ruby and this feels super weird. I've been using OpenTelemetry Ruby for years and and now I can't figure out how to use your API. I'll, I'll get exactly opposite conflicting issues opened. And th like this is something that I think will never be completely solved. Uh, and like I said, we, it's just a balance that we have to strike. Yeah. Um, so. One point I've noticed people uh, haven't realized, so I've been saying more recently, is the spec actually doesn't matter. The details don't matter. We actually don't care. What we care is that the black box, whatever it is, participates in tracing and emits OTLP and semantic conventions. That is what we care about. If abandoning the spec and everything else uh, gets you to that point, then uh, that's fine. Like, that's that is my hot take. Like, now I'm not saying now I'm not saying if we I'm not saying if we spun up a group within Open Telemetry for a new language, we wouldn't say follow the spec and do all of these things. Like, for sure, that is how we do it. But I'm saying for somebody out there, for some project out there, if a language decides they're going to fully integrate tracing and observability into the language and they're a you know um, cantankerous language developer so they want to do everything different like as long as the thing that's the same is semantic conventions and OTLP and participating in tracing like that is actually as far as like the the true spec it's a it's the data the the data is more important than how the data is generated and this does come up when people are like what if I use this other API? To, to do it. We're like, well, that's fine. If whatever works for you. I, I want to be very specific. Participating in open telemetry context, not just participating in tracing. <clears throat> uh, API, the API interop has to work. And the context propagation and uh, assigning. Yeah. 
I guess the idea, and going into the same spirit, is we are all about vendor neutrality. So the ability of changing solutions. If you want to change, if you want to use another API, that's fine, um, as long as you are still able to move uh, to different solutions as, as you wish, as you need. As you need. I think we're on. one more question. And an important way for that SIG to be successful are for those subject matter experts to have direct liaisons with uh, people who understand the open telemetry architecture. So those two groups working together for a while to develop their proposals, we found that is way, 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 uh, has a much higher success rate. Um, and then on the other side of that, our hope is that some of those subject matter experts will stay involved and as they expand their understanding of open telemetry in general, become spec approvers and then uh, eventually uh, we would like to make sure that the TC contains subject matter experts for every signal. Um, but, but we kind of need it to go in that, that level of graduation, basically. I think we're at a, at a time. Are you gonna? Yeah, no, I think, like, yeah. Um, perhaps just one thing to add there is we know that we have gaps there uh, on the TC, like profiling. Uh, right now, we don't have uh, anyone with profiling um, background there. Or some, um, but uh, the, the other one that I can think of is like client instrumentation, right? So we, we could make use of people with better client instrumentation background on a TC. Um, so, but we don't have a, a process defined right now to cover those gaps. Uh, we, we are thinking about how to make the path to the TC more clear, uh, and we have that in our heads. <laughs> uh, it just needs to be documented. I, I also just want to point out, like, this has been a topic for at least a year and a half or so. Um, certainly ever since I started, it, like, yeah, the, the question, not question, but like <laughs> just this entire like top level TC um, <coughs> maintenance and the role of the TC. You know, I think we've actually had a lot of really good progress this year in terms of trying to, you know, help the TC grow organically. Um, I know we actually have one of the newest TC members in the room, you know. So there's always more work to be done, um, and it's, but we need to make sure that we're doing it in kind of a responsible way for both the health of the project um, and also the health of the TC. So feedback is always, of course, welcome. Yeah, as, as far as adding TC members for, for, like you said, new signals, but it doesn't have to be a new signal, like an, a new area of the project, uh, People coming in from the outside are very unlikely to be immediately added to the TC. And so kind of, you know, the, these, these things that run for long periods of time, like a new signal is not going to be added overnight. So subject matter experts that are, that are working in those signals should hopefully evolve into the project and, c and continue to stay in the project. Uh, to me, the question is not, like, how do we get, uh, you know, a TC member with... Uh, experience in this specific area that we just started working on, but it's how do we uh, get that person's opinion effectively integrated into the project, whether they're a TC member or not. If a subject matter expert is, is working in the project, they shouldn't feel like they have to be like, oh, I'm not on the TC, so I don't get a say here, or I'm not a maintainer, so I don't get a say. If you know what you're talking about on a particular subject, uh, having your that, that opinion heard and, and integrated into the project in a way that makes sense, uh, it, to me, is more important than what that person's actual title is. Yeah, just, yeah, I think there's a really important point to be made there. The thing we are looking for in TC members is not necessarily being a subject matter expert. It's about being able to work with subject matter experts and evaluate designs against broader requirements. So someone who is, say, a super expert at profiling or something, but has like a very high-handed opinion about how to do it and doesn't really want to listen to anyone else. They might be right. It's not that they, they would necessarily be wrong, but that is not the kind of person we're looking for on the TC. We're looking for someone who's able to, to maybe be a little more diplomatic and a little more interested in, in gathering requirements and, and hearing from everyone uh, rather than being like my way or the highway. So that, that's a really important quality. 
Yeah, and, and just to close that out, I think the ultimate goal is to what Daniel said, right? In a perfect world, <coughs> the, pro you know, the, the, the processes and the ways that we work are established enough that you don't, that it, there is both a, the perception and the reality align up that you don't have to be like on the TC to be able to actually have impact. You know, and I, I actually think that if there is a perception that you have to be on the TC to have impact, then that is like a failing of the project that we should address. Um, I, you, know, you hear all sorts of things at this level, um, but I think we're always working to make sure that there is more autonomy and that people can kind of come in and, you know, do do their best work. And as long as it's aligned with what we're trying to do at the project level, that they will be successful. So. I think with that, we are over time. Um, we're over time and we have people going to talk. Yeah, we so don't we don't want to cut too much into everyone else's um, time. But you know, we'll be here all day. So if you want to grab someone in the GC, um, there's actually a few other GC members. Raise your hand. So, yeah, yeah, GC or TC members. GC or TC. Yeah, TC members also raise your hand. If you're a TC member too. Yeah. yeah. Anybody yeah, so come find us during a break or at lunch um, if you have four questions, and there will be a panel with our TC members this afternoon. So thank you all very much. And thank you, Reese.